recognizing the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Sensenbrenner, for five um, minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me observe that, uh, you know, there have been all kinds of complaints about leaking transcripts and things like that. One of the reasons we are here today is because there has been a flood of leaks out of the Justice Department about what is going on. It's barely a day goes by when you can't pick up the newspaper and find out that it's rumored this and rumored that. And then we have a witness from the FBI that comes up here and says, oh, no, we can't talk about that here to the Congress, which has constitutional oversight responsibility because it's against our rules. Well, I hope there'd be a few prosecutions of people out of justice that have been leaking this stuff uh, to the various news media. Now, I want to get to looking at statutes. You know, you look at rules, I've been looking at statutes. And um, somehow along the line, uh, in the report on the conclusions of the Clinton investigation, the word gross negligence was changed to extremely careless in determining uh, Mrs. Clinton's uh, handling of classified information. Now, gross negligence uh, would mean that it would subject her to criminal liability. Extremely careless would have the opposite effect. It would not. So I'd like to uh, ask you, Mr. Strzok, a couple questions about that. In the original May 2nd draft of the statement that uh, uh, Director Comey was right, making, it was, it was he ominous. characterized Mrs. Clinton's actions as grossly negligent. Is that correct? That's my recollection, yes. Yes. And... Are you aware that gross negligence was changed to extremely careless in the eventual statement? Yes. Okay. Now, do you recall that the June 6, 6, 2016 meeting attended by you and Mr. Rabicki, Ms. Moyer, Mr. Maffa, and Lisa Page to discuss the language of the statute on whether to use grossly negligent or... Uh, something else in the draft statement. What was discussed at that meeting? So, sir, I don't remember that specific meeting. There are a variety of meetings with a bunch of people that included discussion of this concern. Okay. Did the alternative phrase extremely careless come up at the meeting? Uh, it, it did at some point, sir. I don't know if it okay. was during who, that meeting or at another one. Uh, who, I, I don't well, remember that whenever specific. it happened, who brought it up? My recollection, sir, is that somebody within our office of general counsel did. It was one of the attorneys. I okay. don't remember which you, one. You don't remember who did? No, I, it, was okay. a, it was a legal issue that one of the attorneys brought okay. up. Okay. Now, um, immediately after that meeting, metadata shows that you modified the draft statement on June 6th. Is this when the phrase grossly negligent was changed to extremely careless? Sir, again, I don't recall specifically when it happened. I am aware as no. well of that metadata. My recollection is of working on the draft with a group of us in my office, because it was the largest office, okay. and taking the inputs of probably well, five, was it your, ten was it different your, people. Was it and it was made there. Was it your computer that put the change in to I, the statement? Based on my subsequent review of that metadata, I believe that to be true. Okay, and who, who has access to your computer? Anybody beside you? No, I do. My secretary okay. had access to okay. elements of it. but. Um, and why was the change made? You, know, you were in the meeting where it was agreed that the change would be made. Why was that? My recollection, sir, again, was this was, and I'm not an attorney. My recollection was that attorneys within the FBI had raised the concern that the use of gross negligence uh, triggered a very specific legal meaning in, in a legal context. Yeah, criminal. In, in the legal, criminal. That's exactly right. In a legal context, grossly negligent is used in various statutes to, particularly one of the, the mishandling statutes in 793, to talk about a criminal element of the criminal offense. Okay. And so, sir, if I may quickly, and I promise I'll well, take so, the time. Well, so, you know, let so me one say the, this change was Hillary's get out of jail free card, right? Absolutely not, sir. Well, not in any way. Hillary, Hillary hasn't been prosecuted, so uh, if she wasn't grossly negligent but was extremely careless, you know, then there's no criminal standard involved. With grossly negligent, there is. Sir, I think there are a lot of things I would disagree with in that assertion. First is, she received no get out of jail free card. We pursued the well, facts. She did. She did they... get a get out of the White House free card when the voters uh, uh, cast their votes. Sir, sir, I've heard that said a lot, and I can tell you there's nothing further from the truth. Oh, there was an effort. Trump to... won. That's the truth. So, sir, what I would tell you with regard to that decision, 
there was concern within the perspective of a legal definition of that term that people would draw an inference based on that use that it was necessarily talking about a, a particular subset of a statute. My understanding My is My time what is just about up. That rates for Pinocchios. I yield uh, back. Sir, Mr. Chairman, may I respond? Gentlemen, may I respond? Sir, what I would tell you with regards to that decision is that there was concern about the use of the word grossly negligent and the question of whether or not Director Comey wanted to convey that in the sense of applying the elements of a crime and that whether or not his use, when people heard that, particularly when lawyers looked at it, whether or not they would interpret that as his saying that she did or did not commit any particular statute. My recollection is that the lawyers, based on that, looking at the use of the word grossly negligent, looking at the way that's been defined, looking at the statute where it occurs, both realized that that was probably not what he wanted to say, and ultimately he made the decision to change that wording and convey what it was he did want to say, and that all of those discussions were generated based on a legal discussion of the use of that term as a, as a legal definition, not as a indicia of violation of any particular statute at all. The chair recognizes